Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, we're going to be casting the Banksia seed pot and a few other things in resin. Before casting something in resin, we need to know the end purpose. And for me, the end purpose of the Banksia seed pot is to create beautiful writing instruments like these. So what I need from the Banksy seed pot is to come up with a rectangular blanks like these that later on I can take to the uh, lathe, uh, cut to size and then create that round shape. The other thing we need to know is our material. And like anything else, the Banksy seed pot has useful parts and useless parts. Uh, here is the brief anatomy. I know everything has its botanical name, but I'm going to explain it in what I can relate to. So. On the Banksy seed pot, in the center, we have the core, and this is the hardest part of the Banksy seed pot. Then we have this little brown thing, which is a little fuzzy, and probably I'm going to include a close-up of it. And then on top sits uh, a few other things. But when we take a look at it, anything that sits on top of the fuzzy part is easily breakable. So that, in a way, is useless to me, uh, because I will never be able to get any type of resin or epoxy deep in inside that fuzzy part to stabilize it. So all that is going to be useless. So I'm not going to be casting the entire thing. What I need to do is reduce it to a somewhat manageable size, where I only get the core, which is the center, and maybe a few of the outer parts, which would then uh, be taken off on the lathe. So, Let's get to it, let's go to the bandsaw and cut this in half and see what it looks like. So this is what the seed pot looks like from the inside. Like I said, this is the core which is nice and tough. And on the outside right here we can see the little fuzzy things and the things that basically break away easily there. It's nice and fuzzy. Uh, so that area in particular is useless to me. So what I do next is again, I cut it in the center. So here it is once again, cut through the center and I have four quarters. And now what I need to do is measure my mold and figure out how much I need to cut off from both uh, outer edges. So outer edges, I mean this one right here and this one right here as well. So that way I get rid of majority of that fuzzy and useless part and I only have the hard center core to work with. The next thing to know of course is the size of the mold and then square off both ends of the seed pot so that it fits inside the mold. And as you can see there is a little bit of a gap in between the four blanks and the edge of the, uh, of the mold and there is a reason for that and I'm going to show you in a minute. Before I proceed though, I need to clear every single hole from dirt and debris. And I'm not going to use my mouth, but I'm going to use my air compressor and the uh, pump or the air spray attachment to the air compressor tools. I'll get to it and I'll see you in a second. Now, my molds or forms are not exactly the prettiest or uh, waterproof, but I still manage to get around with them. Now, I don't need an exact shape after I'm done with the process. Uh, this is what comes out, and then I take that to additional machines to get to the final shape. So I don't really need uh, an expensive form to come up with you know, nice square blanks like that. Uh, now, if I needed uh, an exact shape and then do nothing with uh, whatever comes out of that shape, then I would invest in a better form. But for now, I'm just using this. Now the question is what to do with uh, waterproofing. I mean, uh, once I put in the resin and that's a liquid form and it's gonna flow out through all the cracks. Now I use something very ingenious, well, in my eyes, and that is good old fashioned cling film. So I managed to uh, put the cling film all the way down to all the sides. And then I line up my Banksy seed pots. Now I've did that already. And this is what it looks like. So. The additional thing that I'm doing also is raising the seed pod blanks a little bit from the uh, from the bottom of the of the mold, and I'm using those little sticks, uh, one sixteenth inch or one point five millimeter 
uh, thick pieces of wood just to raise it off the bottom and that way it helps the resin encompass all four sides of the seed pods and that helps it get through every single small nook and cranny that exists in the in the seed pod so this is my last thing that I'm gonna do and then I'm gonna take you to actually mixing the cast and the dye and um, putting it all into the uh, into the pressure pot stay tuned now we need to figure out how much resin to add to each and every container the top ones are going to be red the bottom one is going to be black so that makes things a little bit simpler the idea is not to fill the entire container but to fill it to the top of the work pieces plus five millimeters of extra resin so that is a good measure uh, so that we have the entire work pieces inside covered on all four sides. The resin is also a two-part resin where I need to mix the two parts in equal ratios by weight. So ultimately now the question is how much weight of resin do I need? I've done some calculations and this is the method to my madness. We know that a thousand cubic centimeters is equal to one liter of water, which ultimately is equal to one kilogram. So I'm gonna be using this to figure out the relationship between volume and weight. I also figured out that three and a half centimeters is a good mark where the seed pods are covered plus that additional half millimeter. So I took up the measurements uh, and between the three containers, I need 1,356 cubic centimeters. Now, this is based on an empty container. And if I use that entire amount right here, I'll definitely be going over that three and a half centimeter mark. And that's just basically plain wastage of material. And this is where a uh, personal judgment and experience come into play. Uh, the Banksy seed pods, we do see that we have a lot more holes to cover than solid wood where you're just filling a crack or two. Uh, so from personal experience, I know that roughly 80% of the volume of an empty container is what I need to cover the seed pot up to that three and a half centimeter mark. For wood is about 50%. So after doing all those calculations, I need about 540 grams of part A from the resin and 540 grams of part B from the resin for the red color and doing something similar for the black i need 125 grams of part a and 125 grams of part b for the black resin so now it's time to get into action and mix the resin this is going to be a very time sensitive operation so i am not going to provide any explanations instead i'm going to zoom out and let you see all the steps that are being taken <music> couple of interesting things happened. I haven't been casting in a while so probably that's why part B of the resin developed a little crust on the surface and by little crust I mean like ice on a frozen lake. Now I was able to break that off but as I was pouring the resin some of those little particles they fell into part A so I'm not sure how that affected that one-to-one -one ratio and it will be a surprise when I open up the pressure pot tomorrow and see the end result is it gonna be a success or failure <laughs> and now you can pause the video and let me know in the comments what you think and then watch until the end to find out <laughs> the other thing that happened is even though it was working with the uh, air spray tool, uh, the fitting of the hose didn't work when I connected it to the pressure pot. So I took the drastic measure of cutting the hose out and hooking the hose directly onto the pressure pot. Now <laughs> that in itself caused a few comedic moments that I wished I had a second camera to take. I'll have to review this footage and find out uh, what's going on but I focused more on the uh, workbench as to the mixing, the pouring and everything else. So uh, we'll see if that footage is available. Now uh, I'm gonna stop talking and come back tomorrow 
or 24 hours from now and open up the pressure pot and find out the end result. Welcome back, uh, over 24 hours have passed and now it's time to do the big reveal. Uh, so this is what I was mentioning earlier, this is the hose uh, from the air compressor that I connected directly here because of that uh, stupid issue. So first of all I'm going to remove it. And now it's time to uh, undo everything. Now I began with about 80 pounds of pressure, 80 pounds per square inch pressure, and I'm down to 78. So that's pretty good. Um, now I'm going to put my earmuffs uh, because I am going to release the air from this valve and it's single small valve, so it's gonna be a lot of noise. So three, two, one. So, what do you think? Success or failure? <laughs> well, let's check number one. Nice and solid and also nice color. Um, occasionally when you don't mix things correctly or you don't mix enough, you might get a little clouding like you see on this one. Uh, but the good thing is, from what I found, is that this clouding only uh, goes towards the top and the color within the rest of the uh, um, of the casting is still good so don't be afraid if you get one of these and again i don't need an exact shape after i'm done i'm going to be taking it to a different machine so that's why i don't really care if there is a little clouding like this so i'm just going to remove them from the from the molds and let's see how everything is. The best way to separate it is with a nice chisel. And because I have that cling film, uh, nothing sticks to the actual mold itself. And there they are, I'm not sure if they can be visible through. Yeah, there they are. So that little translucent is uh, part of the um, part of the casting, and then the dark side are the seed pots. And this is how I cast the Banksy seed pot in resin. Now there is a lesson to be learned here, and the lesson is that I did my math incorrectly. Uh, based on the amount that I poured in, which was a little bit less than the calculated amount that I showed, uh, and based on the wastage that I have, I kind of figured out that I needed about 50 to 60 percent of the uh, volume of the liquid in the empty container as opposed to the 80 percent. So I was kind of wondering how on earth did I say 80 percent, where it was just so, so way off. And as I was walking through my workshop, I kicked in this. And this is the reason. When I cast the pine cones in resin, that's when I use 80% because as you see, a pine cone is definitely a lot more flakier than the seed pod. And that kind of gives me another, another idea that I should do a video on casting the spruce cones or pine cones in resin. And that's when I'm gonna be using that 80%. But for the seed pod, uh, definitely something between 50 and 60%. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video uploads. Also, follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.